I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great. Smarter. More aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. Like I could. Take, Take on, on the world. Look, Hoagie, it's a hamster. Just what I need for dissection lab tomorrow. I think I need that for the band, Laverne. You know, like we could bite its head off or whatever. Hands off that hamster. Friend of yours, Bernard? He belongs to Weird Ed Edison, and it looks like he's brought us a note. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that Purple Tentacle's mutated into an insane genius, and Dr. Fred's going to kill them both. I thought I was free of Dr. Fred and those crazy Edisons forever. But now, I know that I must go... back to the mansion. Okay, we'll spread out commando style. Laverne, you go secure the area behind those double doors. Hoagie, you take care of upstairs reconnaissance. I'll maintain Command HQ here, in the lobby. What are we looking for? We've got to find where Dr. Fred is holding the tentacles. This better not take too long. I've got an anatomy final tomorrow. And I've got a show to set up later tonight. If I'm late, I don't get to test the drums. If I know Dr. Fred, he's got the tentacles tied up in his secret lab. Question is, where's his secret lab? How did that get up there? Help 
wanted, lab assistant, hardworking moronic drone needed to assist genius with experiments, high school diploma, not required. That one looks like it's from a local hardware store. It's from George's hardware. George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. A horticultural horror. It's stuck to the floor. It's signed, here's your EPA grant. Keep up the good work. Hi from Mommy. Ronnie, 83. Looks like Dr. Fred wearing a powdered wig. Handsome in a way, but I'm glad he eventually accepted his hair loss. Boy, the Edisons are a spectacularly ugly family. Wow, it's from my favorite movie. Gee, Dr. Fred doesn't have a penny. It's a bottle of correctional fluid. Ah, a secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river. Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course. That's why I'll have to do it. Yesterday, through the time machine. This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children. The Chronogen! Da, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not. This is the first time I've ever tried it on people. <laughs> Oh.
Well, I'll be. Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. This must be that Woodstock place Mom and Dad are always talking about. What could it all mean? I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die. We may not live to see yesterday. I'm sure Dr. Fred wouldn't have done this if it weren't safe. After all, he is a doctor. It works! I can't believe it! And they said Imitation Diamond wasn't good enough. Uh-oh. Cheap mail order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. Maybe I put them upstairs. That's got to be it. Upstairs! It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only 0.01 seconds. Wow! I've got the plans. Quick, we have to flush them to Hoagie. How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them. Yes! Down the toilet. No, through time! Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times, tentacles are taking over the world, and now the toilet's backing up. Okay. 
Come over here. It's your old pal, Dr. Fred. Dr. Fred, how'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogon, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogon. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time for me to save the world, I guess. Soon all the power of the heavens will be mine! All mine! If only we had some nasty weather! Hi there, mister. Franklin, Ben Franklin, soon to be known as the inventor of electricity. Uh, do you know Red Edison? He's a scientist guy, too. Red Edison? A scientist? He's just an innkeeper who pretends to be a scientist, and he's not very good at doing either one. I can't believe Washington and Jefferson picked his inn, of all places, to write our Constitution. You mean Washington like President Washington? Did he tell you he was president? The nerve of that guy, always trying to run things. But of course, no one will care who's president once I've harnessed the ultimate power, the power of electricity. <laughs> Shouldn't you say, the discoverer of electricity? You think the ultimate power in the universe is just under some rock waiting to be discovered? Ha! I, Ben Franklin, am going to summon power from the sky by sheer force of genius! I could use a little power myself for my time machine. There will be power enough for all in time. There aren't any time machines yet anyway. That's next summer's project. Well, I'll let you get back to your tugging. Yes, back to science. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. What's up? Don't feel like talking, huh? Vow of silence or something, probably, right? Well, that's cool. I have something for Red Edison. Do you know where I could find him? Later, dude. Yo. Hello? Are you petrified of public speaking? No, I'm freezing. 
why don't you have some hot coffee? Oh, I can't stand coffee. It makes me irritable and want to bang my head against the walls. Whoa, I can relate. Well, please don't do it around here. What are you guys doing in here? We're writing a... a, a writing the... A, We're drafting a constitution for the United States. Don't say draft. You'll only make me colder. Wimp. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it. You mean it's like a symbol of growth or something? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any br brilliant ideas? You could guarantee the right to free speech. Hmm, free speech? No, that'll never work. Well, I gotta go, dude. So as soon as Hoagie gets that battery working, we're set. I'm afraid not. We still need a diamond for the main unit. And your friend in the future needs power too, if she's still alive. Alive? Get me out of here. I like trees and everything, but this one has got to go. There's something in the chronogon. <clears throat> Boy, it's sure quiet in here. I wonder if there might be any ideas worth discussing in the suggestion box. Maybe somebody should take a look. I say, lad, I have an idea. Does it have anything to, to do with starting a fire? No. I was thinking it's about time we open the suggestion box. Don't you agree? Sure, George, if you say so. Yes, whatever you think is fine with us. Excellent. What's he thinking? No one of any importance has been here all day. What could be in the suggestion box? Perhaps he intends to suggest something himself. Oh. Ah, here's a suggestion. It says, George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. 
What do you think, gentlemen? Mm, whatever you say, George. Your name's on it. I'm sure you must have a good reason for suggesting it. Yes. It's strange. I don't quite... Well, I'm sure I had a reason for it. If there are no objections, we shall add it to the Constitution immediately. No? Good. And so shall it be law. What's a vacuum cleaner? Sounds like the cat's caught a moose up there. Uh, hi, horsey. Hi yourself. Wow, you can talk. Wow, so can you. What a coincidence. I didn't think horses could talk. Maybe they just never had anything to say to you. Ever think of that? You mean horses have been snubbing me my whole life? Well, if you want to put it that way. Is this some kind of a trick? I don't do magic, I'm just a horse. What's a nice horse like you doing in a place like this? Hey, I live here. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get back to the future and save the world. The future, huh? And I thought that Franklin guy was off his nut. Nice teeth. Thanks. I paid quite a bit for them. Well, I gotta go. See you later. Ahem. The LALR compiler is constructed by the following method. First, develop a rigorous elective grammar. If the elements have NP completeness, the crunchy factor can be ignored. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa. I don't quite see how it can fly. These would look better on velvet. I told you guys I'll get to the flag next. I'm working as fast as I can. Hey, chill. Take your time. Don't tell me you've got another design change for the flag. I've got another design change for the flag. I knew it. What's the current brainstorm from our fickle founding fathers?
How about a skull with like scorpions in its mouth? Oh, what the heck. At this point, I'd do anything just to have it over with. Put the pattern on the table and I'll look at it when I'm done with this job. The late Max Addox. His petard runneth over. A lamentable fate for such a patriotic dude. I guess this is George Washington's bed. Here I am, don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. Boy, what a mess. Is it? You look kind of familiar. Of course I do. I'm Red Edison, the inventor, not to mention owner of this inn. Perhaps you've seen my picture in some important scientific journal. Then again, maybe not. What are you doing? I'm inventing you, simpleton. What's it look like I'm doing? I know an inventor who looks a bit like you. Well, it's not one of my sons, that's for sure. It appears that I, Red Edison, foremost genius of my day, am to be the last in a long line of gifted inventors. My nearly indistinguishable sons have decided that they want to be artists. I think it was Jed's idea. Or is it Ned? Ah, well, the left-handed one at any rate. Must be some sort of bad blood on their mother's side. What are you inventing? It's a new size independent fastening mechanism based on circular geometry. Well, see you later. You might if you cut that hair a bit shorter. Hmm, super battery, eh? Brilliant design. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now all I need is oil, vinegar, and some gold. What's this? Mm, help wanted, moronic drone, mm, assist genius, yada yada yada. Well, I'm the only genius around. And you look dumb enough. Uh... So pick up your lab coat and get to work. Say, hey, that's a left-handed hammer, you know. I invented it myself. It was for my ungrateful slob of a left-handed son. Oh, well. I'll use the chronojohn. <laughs> The water's all sudsy now. Nothing to clean in here. How about an amendment that the president has to be a human being? Please, this is serious business. You're right.
Looks like a big storm. See, this is why I never wash my car. Hey, Ben. Oh, it's you. Where are you going? What about your experiment? Even science sometimes gets cold on account of rain, my boy. But how are you ever going to get lightning if you're not going to stand out in a storm? To be frank, which I am, I don't know. The science of electrodynamics, much like your mind apparently, is still in a state of relative infancy. Back to the drawing board, I say. What a genius. Hey, Dr. Fred. You're going to get really chafed hands doing that. Sorry, coffee jitters. Maybe you should switch to decaf. No, then I'd fall asleep and the dreams would come. Well, gotta go save the world. Good luck. This beautiful 4,000 carat diamond can be yours today for the special rock bottom introductory price of $2 million. The number to call is 1-800-STAR-WARS. Don't miss this amazing once in a lifetime opportunity. It's useless. No one will ever be interested in my design, so I'm ending my novelty inventing career right here in this tacky motel. How appropriate. <sighs> I can't even do this right. Hi, my name's Bernard. What's yours? Dwayne. Isn't that depressing? Gee, you look depressed. What clued you in, Brainiac? The gun was a good tip-off. I'm having a crisis here, a warehouse of anguish. I'm a novelty goods designer by trade. I've come up with some fabulous ideas. The exploding lollipop, itching powder gum, and reverse 3D glasses, to name a few. The problem is, no one likes my designs. I send them all over the world and no one responds. I just wish someone would say they liked one just once. Oh, woe is me. I like your design ideas. Well, I didn't mean you. Never mind. Hey, there's a letter here for you. For me? Eh, probably another rejection slip. Oh, well. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once.
green. Bernard! What are you doing up here? Well, I couldn't stop Purple, and he's gonna go out and conquer the world, and, and I'm afraid of what he'll do if he catches me, if Dr. Fred doesn't find me first. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Hey! What's up, Bernard? Wanna help me save the world? I'm afraid to leave the room. In fact, I don't think I can even move from this spot. Purple scares the daylights out of me. What do you suppose Purple's up to now? Well, he wants to take over the world, so I figure he's up to something devious. Pushing old ladies down the stairs? I wouldn't doubt it, but I was thinking more along the lines of politics. How's your new band doing? Green tea and the sushi platter? We're doing great! We've decided to really capitalize on our strongest quality as a band. Carefully crafted melody and distinctive counterpoint? Volume, man, volume! We have a chance to win a Grimy Award as the loudest new band. We're pulling out all the stops. Weren't you looking for a new guitarist a while back? Yes, but we decided to go with a guy who plays power tools instead. We can generate a lot more sound that way. Have you gotten any airplay? No, we're a little too experimental for most radio stations, but we have a huge following in the club scene. Are you working on an album? Yeah, we're doing a CD called Rap on the Forehead. I've got a few tracks hooked up through the stereo if you want to hear them. That's great. Yeah. See you later. Yeah! Good luck in saving the world, B-Man! Hoagie would really love these. Wow! This is loud! Whew. Hey, aren't you weird Ed Edison, the paramilitary nut? Why, yes, I... Hey, do I know you? Yeah, I'm Bernard Benulli. I broke into your house five years ago, kidnapped your hamster, broke into your piggy bank, Nope, doesn't ring a bell, but I can't remember much about that period anyway. My psychotherapist thinks something traumatic happened to me back then that I'm blocking out. So you gave up the crazy military commando thing? I'm much better now. I don't have those... those bad thoughts anymore. Now I collect stamps. That's quite a nice collection. Can I have it? No. I mean, uh, no. They mean a lot to me. Sometimes I think they're the only friends I've got. Nice hamster. Does he do tricks? No, he just sits there. I used to have a really smart hamster, but something happened to him. What happened to the old hamster? I... I don't remember. When I try, all I can think of is a flash of light and this horrible sound. 
What was the horrible sound? It was sort of like, ding, oh God, I hear it in my dreams till this day. How are the folks? Where Dad's in the basement doing an experiment, Mom's in the next room spying on a honeymoon, Ted's in the front yard. Holding up a bowl of lard? Well, it's a birdbath, actually, but it rhymes better your way. Well, hope I didn't get you too excited. Bye. Peace be with you. I've got one just like this packed away in the garage. Hello, little computer. I respect you, even though you've only got 64K of memory. Hey, want to see a neat trick? Sure. Neat, huh? Uh... My Pony Express stamp. You ruined my Pony Express stamp. Not to mention five years of therapy. Get out of my room. Jeez, what a grump. He should really try to find some outlet for those... Negative feelings. It looks like all the inks disappeared now. Get out of here. Hey, you fixed it. I guess I can forgive you now. Sometimes I do stupid stuff and I don't even know why. As if my body were being controlled by some demented, sadistic puppet master. Well, we all feel that way sometimes. Excuse me. What is it? I'm rather. Say, aren't you Bernard Bernoulli? Yes, that's right. I knew it! You broke into our mansion a few years ago to save your little friend. What did you come for this time? I'm trying to keep a tentacle from conquering the world. Really? This is quite an array of gadgetry you have here. Yes, it's the best surveillance system in the state. Is that a Plexus 7000 VCR? It sure is. It's got a dual tape speed motor with cobalt casing. Don't touch it. Are those xenophobe crystal matrix monitors? They sure are. They're so clear you can see the fleas on the bedroom walls. Don't touch! I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Come back any time, you big hunk. <laughs> Baby, what a man. You ain't kidding, precious. It's signed, Edna, thanks for giving me the fever. It looks like a physics professor I knew in the second grade. Creepy. Must be an Edison. Thank you.
there doesn't seem to be anything dangerous in there. It's not exactly the Ritz. the party you and the clown were having a party no no last night at the novelty good salesman's convention I tell you we novelty good salesmen know how to have a good time has anyone ever told you you look like Don Corleone that's strange my wife says I look like Charles de Gaulle Oh, want a cigar? Sure, lay one of those Havanan babies on me. Thought I was gonna blow your head off there, didn't you? Well, you were right! You shouldn't smoke. It's a bad habit. That cracks me up every time. Hey, isn't that Albert Einstein? Huh? I don't see anything. Oh, never mind. Hi there. What can I do for you, kid? Has anyone ever told you you look like Donny Osmond? That's strange. My wife says I look like the ghost pirate LeChuck. So, want another cigar? Okay, but only if you promise not to light it this time. Would I do a thing like that? Get lost, kid! Jumpy little sucker. I've never gotten over my childhood fear of Uzo. I hate that clown. I guess not too many birds bathe in the evening.
Hi. Don't sneak up on me like that. What are you up to? Uh, I uh, locked my keys in the car. If you're locked out, why break into the trunk? I uh, have a spare set of keys in there. Here, perhaps these are your keys. Where? Gimme. Hey, thanks, pal. Keep the crowbar. Thank you, masked man. What sort of person would carry around this many keys? Maybe this one. Pretty darn cold. I'm sorry to do this to you, little fella, but it's for the future of the whole planet. got here. I'd better be going now.
excuse me. Yes? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. Does Mrs. Washington know you wear so much makeup? One must wear makeup when one receives the phenomenal amount of media attention that I do. It's quite likely that I'll be president soon, you know. Do you think I should be the ecology president or the education president? Depends on how many cherry trees you've chopped down. Well, I am quite the adept tree cutter. Men still tell tales of my youthful prowess. I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there isn't. I only cut down cherry trees. Family tradition, you understand, cherries only. There's nothing out there but cedar and kumquats. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. President, may I offer you an excellent smoke? Can you also provide me with a light? Sure. Well, in that case... I hate it when that happens. See if you can't find those for me, will you? There's a good lad. Could you use these? Why, thank you, young man. Strange. I wonder if I should cut down on the coffee. Hey, Tom, look! The father of our nation is cold. Better build a fire. You're right. Huh? I guess you can have my log. Me? Why should I build the fire? You build the fire. I'm bothered by the smoke. You build the fire. I'm bothered by your attitude. You build the fire. No, you build the fire, Mr. Penmanship. No, you build the fire, log lover. No, you build the fire. No, you build the fire. You big baby. Question is, which one's stuffed and which one's the real McCoy? 
I assure you that we are both real, but we are neither one of us McCoys. We are Edisons, Ned and Jed. Who's who? Does it really matter? Even our dear father can't tell us apart. He only knows that one of us is left-handed while the other is right, but that neither of us are following in his tiny scientific footsteps. Hold still, Jed. So, I'm almost too frightened to ask, are you the marble delivery man? Or the model? I'm the model. Should I take my clothes off now? No. No, you most definitely should not. We couldn't get your body shape right anyway, unless we cemented two slabs of marble together. But then your statue would have a big seam in it. That's okay. It would have one anyway. Look, don't call us. We'll call you. Dang. I'm no marble delivery man, but rock is my life. <laughs> I'm sure that's terribly amusing, where you're from. Where exactly did you come from? I live off campus with Bernard and Laverne. How nice for you. How nice for Bernard. How nice for Laverne. How nice for everybody. Well, actually, they never let me play my music very loud. Yes, of course. Well, goodbye. Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. guided my hand with such care. Must inspiration be so transitory? Must art be so cruel? I'm a failure. Don't say that, Ned. Father was right. We Edisons are made to be scientists, not artists. Dear brother, we must be strong in these times of creative adversity. Why don't you let me take over for a while? I'll clean this rubble up and start over. You relax. Have a cappuccino. I'm glad we switched places. I think you're coming out quite well. who started the fire.
It looks pretty clear in here now. Say, did you get the pen on our way out? No, I... I found a blanket blocking the chimney. Son, do you know anything about a blanket? Uh, didn't the dude next to you have one earlier? Uh... Uh, hey, catch you later. Excellent. I need that for my super battery. Ah, excellent. I need that for my super battery. Thank you. This is exactly the sort of thing I need for the time capsule. I'll bury it tonight and it won't be seen for hundreds of years. Future generations are in your debt. Whoa. Excuse me. Yes? I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truth, eh? Well... I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there... Oh, well, what do you know? There is a cherry tree out there. Well, let's go chop the sucker down. I said, come down from there at once! Try to understand. I'm stuck in this... Voila! You're quite a man. Yes, I know. I waited, but she never picked it up. I hope she's okay. Get me out of here! I haven't done anything! Well, you must have done something or you wouldn't be here now, would you? You'd be out in the lobby with your tentacle owner getting dressed up for the human show. Owner? No one owns me! Gosh, no owner, you say? Well, don't worry about it. I'm sure someone will come adopt you before we have to put you to sleep. Damn that, Dr. Fred. Hey, she knows the Edison family motto. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Tentacle Guy. What? Ooh, I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to <laughs> throw up all over. Uh-oh. Time to visit Dr. Tentacle. Well, well, what have we here? I feel pukey. Indeed. All right, now hold still. Are you gonna use your scalpel? No, of course not. Darn. Do you want to use mine? Uh, no. Hmm. What? Hmm. What? What? Just as I suspected. What? There's nothing wrong with you, human. 
What a letdown. Well, I'm late for the show. I'll send your keeper back for you. Oh. Sit. Stay. Good boy. Tell me, Lieutenant, how do you really feel about humans? Honestly, sir, I think they're filthy, obscene, foul, sickening, like the stuff in your eyes when you wake up, like the wax that builds up behind your suction cups after a few days. Like that's enough, son. I just wanted to be sure you weren't one of those humanist sympathizers. What with this ridiculous human show going on here, there's humophiles everywhere. I'm no humophile, sir. That's good. Now, let me tell you about a little plan I have. Hi, my name's Laverne. I'm a sophomore. My name's Harold. I'm a thoroughbred. What are you, uh, guys waiting for? We're all waiting for the human show to begin, of course. If your owner is going to interview, they'd better get you some name tags quick. But then again, why bother? My owner says I'm going to win. I'm the most beautiful human there is. That's quite a tutu you've got there. Thank you. My owner paid quite a lot of money for it. My owner buys me anything I want. Is your hair naturally blue? Natural? Oh, gosh. This took several very expensive sessions at a posh grooming salon. I've got the hair competition in the bag. Where is your owner? He's not here right now. But he would be if he in any way possibly could. His bus broke down in Pittsburgh, so he's stuck there with the other owners. This is the first show I've ever done. Alone. Well then, good luck. Who needs luck when you've got beauty? Hey, how'd you get out? Get back in there. I wish Dr. Tentacle would stop losing patients. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Tentacle Guy. What? I have to go to the bathroom. Ha, that's a good one. Imagine a human using a bathroom. Come on, let's take a walk. Okay, human, do your business.
Mmm, thanks. I needed a little pick-me-up. <coughs> Must open safe. Must sign contract. Must provide for family. What sonambulistic disquiet he suffers. That must be Dr. Fred's contract. Well, you know what they say. If you want to save the world, gotta push a few old ladies down the stairs. It's already rewound. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us. We'd like to go over some of your records with you. Upstairs. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us. Is that a W390B frivolous spending report? No, it's another 561AB negative attention statement. Uh, I can't believe what a mess these records are. What is it? Are you guys brothers? At the IRS, we're all brothers. Who's your tailor? Very funny. What have you done with Dr. Fred? We've got him safely locked in the next room while we go over his books. No, you can't go in and see him. And don't even think about staging some kind of rescue. I'll just be moseying along. Keep your nose clean, kid. What did you say your wife's name was again?
Hmm, thought I heard something. Everything okay in there? Well, try and keep it down, okay? mistake again. <laughs> Oof! Dr. Fred, are you okay? Dr. Fred? I'd better get him to the lab. Well, I got him in here, but he's out cold. Let's see, it's 101-99957. The party of the first part shall hereby be known as a crazed maniacal genius. I got the contract for you to sign, Doctor. Sorry, I don't like to sign things that I haven't read. Sign it, or I'll 
get real mad. And do what? Not be my friend anymore? Ha ha ha. Will you please sign this contract? I don't sign things I haven't read. But the whole human race is at risk. Of course! That's why I'm busy trying to think of a way to save it. I don't have time to read. Now leave me alone. Will you please sign this contract? I don't sign things I haven't read. Oh, forget it. I'll get rid of Purple Tentacle myself. Oh, yeah? How? I guess I can't. Hey, did you join a record club lately? Good God, no! Those things are horrible money-leeching death traps! Well, there's a delivery man upstairs with a carton of easy listening 8-tracks for you. He says you have to pay for them. Ah, not again! Unless you sign this refusal form immediately. Thanks. That was a close one. Well, good luck. Yes, what do you want? Hi there, is this Dr. Fred Edison? Who did you think you called? Dr. Spock? Look, I don't have all day. This is Farley Crock at LucasArts Games. I just discovered your contract among some very old files, and, well, our lawyers say that we uh, have to pay you $2 million in back royalties. Uh, for the use of your family in the Maniac Mansion video game. What? This is Farley Crock. No, I heard that, you moron. When do I get my money? Oh, right now. It's been credited to your Swiss bank account. Operator, get me a travel agent. This is an emergency. Maybe we should add a rule that you can't dump sludge into the water supply. What manner of rule would do that in the first place? You're right. Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Um, uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's 846-427-35327. Very good, sir. We'll send the diamond by Pronto Post Lightspeed Delivery immediately. Thank you for calling. Now that's service.
I'd better get this to Dr. Fred right away. That should do it. Where did you get this diamond anyway? Uh, it was donated by a group of Girl Scouts who were in the neighborhood. How heartwarming. Can we bring back my friends now? We've repaired the primary device, but before we can do anything, both time pods must be energized as well. Then we can bring back uh, what's his name and who's her face. Hoagie and Laverne. Yes, fine specimens. Mr. Tentacle Guy. It's about time. You who, Mr. Tentacle Guy? What? Ooh, I don't feel so good. Again? Hello, I'm a tentacle. I'd like to enter my insignificant human in the show. Oh my, yes, yes, of course. Take these tags and put them on your human and have them wait on the bench in the lobby. Entrance will be judged in three categories. Best smile, best hair, and best lamp. Thank you, fellow tentacle. Unlike humans, you have been very useful. Oh, uh, thank you. Believe me, it was my pleasure. Now all I need is a human. Yowza! That was one good-looking tentacle.
are the final element for my ingenious battery. Stand back, boy. Give me room to work. of modern science. It will look lovely here on the shelf until I take it with me to Baltimore. Don't look now, but the British are coming, dude. Eh? Where? Is that supposed to be funny? I'm very busy. I got something good for you, mister. Uh, mister. Mr. Brainstorm? Yes, hand it over. Hmm, doesn't this belong to somebody? Yeah, Red Edison. Ah. I'm sorry, but the man has no vision. A lightweight, durable fabric like this going to waste down in his basement. When I'm done with it, it will fly. Hmm. Eureka! The all-season Francocopter, ready to make history. No, there's no fuse. So, what do I light? For the last time, you're not going to light anything. You just push it. The whole time? How am I going to get up that high? Listen, just wait for me to say the word now. Then push the kite into the air, all right? I'm on you, lasagna. Let's hope so. Now! We. You got it. Just hang on there. She's too heavy. I can't control her. Hang on, Ben. Hang on. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. Run for your life. Now that was interesting. Yeah. Say, can I see that kite for a second? No, I'm taking it back to my lab in Philly right now so I can study the results. Wish me luck. I never got your name. It's Hoagie, sir. Nice working with you, Hoagie. I promise to name an invention after you someday. Gosh, thanks. What an interesting mannequin. You're ready to go now. That's the spirit! 
Everyone's raring to go. Let's get this show on the road. Ah, here it comes. My finest hour. Great Scott! Your purple... Uh, um... Yes? Well, don't you just look good enough to eat? What's that supposed to mean? You're not a human sympathizer, are you? I think humans are the vilest creatures on the planet. That's the spirit. You know, I'm working on a way to get rid of the humans once and for all. So, what are you plotting? I'm building a shrinking ray, which I can use to shrink those pesky humans out of my sight for good. more about this shrinking ray of yours? I call it the Diminuator. The biggest problem left is to design a trigger that doesn't require fingers. If you will excuse me, I've got something in the oven. Anyone I know, eh? Chuckle, chuckle. That's gross. What are you babbling about? You really should have told the judges if you weren't feeling well. Oh, ick. Now, how did that mess get in there? I think I'm going to be sick. Someone in here not feeling well? I was feeling fine until I saw that. Is that your regurgitation? No, I'm a healthy human. Didn't you just say you thought you were going to be sick? That's just a figure of speech. Do you realize you could have infected the whole show with human influenza? But I just got all my shots. You're a good-looking human, Harold, but you know the rules. You're out of the show. <laughs> What a mess. I hate cleaning up after humans. And so I said to her, that's not my suction cup. <laughs> you think that's funny? Listen to this. Hey, when are you guys going to judge best hair? Oh, all right. Wow, that's the best hair I've ever seen on a mummy. Thick and full and juicy. The mummy wins. Agreed. Hey, when are you guys going to judge best smile? Oh, all right. Ah, 
I like the quiet one with the big T. There's nothing in the rules about them being white. First place goes to the mummy. Agreed. When are you guys going to judge best left? <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, who's got a joke? Hey, I just flew in from Baltimore, and boy, are my suction cups tired. <laughs> a classic. Huh. 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 It's amazing how the mummy can do that without moving his lips. I say we give him first place. Agreed. Well, that makes him best of show. Let's go congratulate him. He is very well preserved. I'll miss his laugh. It's time to give him his winnings and start packing up. We gotta get this whole show to Baltimore by Thursday. Yes, our work here is done. Well, Ted, this is where we <laughs> part ways. You've certainly helped save humanity, even though you've been <laughs> dead for thousands of years. I think you're my favorite Edison. Lieutenant, I want to ask you something. It may trouble you. Ask away, sir. I can take it. I've got a strong stomach, nerves of steel, bowels of brass. Suck at it, son. This is important. Have any of your friends seemed a bit firm lately? Ooh, egg! You mean like non-squishy and non-slimy? That's right. Come closer. I've recently become suspicious that humans might try to infiltrate us. No! Though basically stupid, they can be tricky. They may be in disguise. I hope this isn't like the primitive, dangerous microwave ovens of my century. Those things could really pop a hamster good. Century. You see, kids who put hamsters in microwaves back where I'm from get taken away from their parents and put up for adoption. So don't do it. This ought to warm him up. to be good.
Well, what do we have here? Looks like a prosthetic rodent. Another specimen. Say, hey, cutie, what brings a hot tentacle babe like you to a dump like this? I'm uh, here to see you, big boy. Really? Well, what are you doing for dinner? How about Club Tentacle? Hey, what am I saying? I can't afford to take out the trash, let alone a classy babe like you. <sighs> I'm here by accident. Bye. Hey, I don't want to be here either. Whoa! Dinner for two at Club Tentacle? I can't wait to tell my wife. You're free! Free to do what? Free to... to run wild through the woods like humans should. Big deal. I said you're free. Now get off your fat, lazy butts and start enjoying it. Enjoy being hunted for the rest of our lives by that mustached old tentacle with a big net? If we ran off, he'd be right on our trail. If we stay here, we know we'll be warm and comfortable. Outside, we'd be eating bugs and moss. You'll be eating my fist in a second. The woods are filled with wild animals. Lions, tigers, and skunks. Man, I hate skunks. Hey, look, a skunk. Come back here, you mangy humans. You can't do this. This is an escape proof facility. Who says you can't learn anything from cartoons, eh, kitty? Look at that sucker go! He just keeps running and running and running.
According to my instruments, everything is in readiness. Your friends have activated their units, so it's time to throw the switch! Great! Hoagie! I'm so happy to... Hi! Laverne! Wow! I'm so glad you two made it back okay. I hate to interrupt, but there's no time to lose. Now that you're back, we've got to proceed with the original plan and send you back to yesterday to turn off the Sladjomatic. Huh? Say what? Now hold on a minute, Dr. Fred. They just barely made it back to our time alive, and I think... Ha <laughs> ha! You can't turn off the machine if I get there first. Uh-oh. Don't worry, guys. This time I know I can stop him. Uh-oh. I guess we better do something. Let's go. No, wait! You can't all go in the same stall. Didn't you see the fly? We're... We're... We're some kind of monster, dudes. Great. Stuck here the rest of my life, listening to Bernard talking and watching Hoagie eat. Mom warned me there'd be days like this. Now, wait just a minute. It's Purple Tentacle! It's Green Tentacle. What was that green? What? I believe he's trying to warn you about me. Oh. We're going to turn off the sludge matic and defeat your evil plan, overgrown worm. You sorry lot are no match for me. But there's three of us. Well, sort of. Nevertheless, I mean to crush you. Yeah? You and what army? Why, this army, of course. Yikes. You see, I've been busy. These are all versions of myself from the future. I've been bringing them back here using the Chronojon. Together, we will conquer the world. You ten there. Go to the basement and guard the sludge -omatic. No one is to touch the sludge -omatic. Now, creature, I must decide what excruciating tortures to leave them to me. I've been itching for a chance to test out my newly completed diminuator. Uh-oh. Excuse me. Um, us. <laughs> All right, the rest of you come with me. Next stop, the world. What do we do now? Whoa. It wears off. Aha. Run for it. Damn. The battery must not have had time to recharge, but it will. Maybe he won't find us. You who, where are you, human?
there, I think. Aha! Uh-oh. Take that. <laughs> and this. Drat. Hmm. Where'd he go? Great! Now we can turn off the machine and prevent all this tentacle mayhem from ever happening. Well, I'm certainly glad that's over with. Yeah, let's get out of here. Leaving so soon, we haven't had the chance to get to know one another. You humans are so small-minded. Ha 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 ha! Eek! Run all you like, you insignificant insect. You can't stop me. Just what is it you have against humans, anyway? Humans are our oppressors. They made us live in this horrible motel. They created us in ungainly forms, so we could not rise against them. Try walking around with your legs tied together and glue on your shoes. You'll see what I mean. Sounds like that's all Dr. Fred's fault, really. Hmm, I suppose you're right about that. I didn't start out hating all humans, just Dr. Fred. You're pretty handy with that ray gun. Center of the forehead every time. Would you like a demonstration? I bet you couldn't hit your own forehead. Nice try. Why don't you zap Fred with the ray gun for a change? Hmm, perhaps that would be entertaining. Oh, drat. Uh, surely we can talk this out. Talk? Surely. Wait! You haven't heard the last of me. I'll be back, and the next time, the world and all its piffling inhabitants shall be mine. All mine! <laughs> all mine! Okay, little fella. Mail this to Siberia. Our work here is done. Now we can go home. Well, 
kiddies. It's been more fun than a jumpsuit full of weasels. Now, kindly get your freakish hide out of my home. Please, Dr. Fred, you've got to get us out of this mess. We look terrible, and we can't buy clothes off the rack. I'm getting sort of used to it. Maybe we could go on the talk show circuit. Help us, Dr. Edison. You're our only hope. Oh, all right. Hmm. Seems you're not exactly the sideshow attraction you imagined. You're just three complete goofballs stuck in one suit of clothes. I'm glad that's taken care of. Looks like everything's back to normal. <laughs>